are a decent player. You've been playing for a little while, you know your skills, you know licks, you know how to jam with people, you know how to jam with backing tracks. It sounds okay. Your friends tell you it sounds okay. And uh, yet there's something missing. It's the time factor, the time element. That time element can be manipulated. You can create new ideas with the ideas you already have by simply shifting time around. We're gonna talk all about it. It's so much fun and so rewarding. Grab your guitar, we'll get started right after this. Hello, this is David from the Wallman Guitar Artistry. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players around the world develop their musical personality. You have an awesome story to say, something very personal and unique. This channel will help you deliver that story in the most efficient way. And before we get started, there's a backing track that is available for this lesson, the one you're hearing right now. We're in G Aeolian, G minor, G minor pentatonic, all that is going to work. Right? And if you want to get this backing track, download it, play it, and uh, get the charts for the lesson, it's simple. Below there's a link that takes you to a sign up page to sign up once. You'll get access to these assets for free. And you will also be able to access many other videos on the, the, the channel with the assets of those videos. It's a great way to learn for free. All right, what are we talking about today? We're talking about being above time, kind of externalizing ourselves from the canvas that we're playing over. The canvas is this backing track, right? That's established, we can't change that. We are painting over this. This has a tempo. Strong beats here, okay? Now, this could be divided into equal sections. Twos, da 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 da. Fours, da 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 da. Threes, da 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 da. Or whatever you want, right? And typically we approach that um, division as a very proper mathematical division. Everything is equal, and that's fine. And once you have that subdivision in your head, we'll do fours, you use that as guidelines to improvise. So, da da da. That's in the back of my mind as I play. And I'm just gonna play some licks. That doesn't mean that all my licks are gonna be in the No, that's gonna be boring. We need spaces, we need longer notes. That subdivision is gonna be a guide. So anytime I play a note, it's gonna fall on one of those subdivisions. It's gonna just help me. I'm still hearing in the back of my mind. But anytime I play a note, it falls under one of those subdivisions. Okay, that's the, the standard way of doing things. That's how we learn typically to play. And that's great. But once we establish that, well, there's something else that we can do. We can take control over our playing and be a little bit above it. Take uh, just confidence in our expression. Instead of matching everything properly, we can be above it. And we can make the listener want what you're playing even more. How do you do that? Well, by withholding a little bit. You know, here's a piece of candy. Get it? No, 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 no. There you go. You like it even better. Right. Invisible candy. Okay, we can do that with music. How? Well, we could do it this way. I'm going to drop my guitar for a sec to illustrate this, but very gently, on the floor. And uh, we're going to listen to this. So. Instead of doing a, a phrase rhythmically that is maybe uh, just four, um, four notes in a, in, a, in a beat, instead of doing da ga da ga, got four notes, right? One, two, three, four. I'm gonna deliver that four a little bit later. One, two, three, four. Something like that, right? So you expect the four, but it's not there yet. And one, two, three, Four. Okay, great, you're satisfied with that four. Same thing with uh, the instrument here. So how do we do that? Well, we take a simple lick, okay? Here's the lick. I'm going to play, uh, it's a brand new lick that I came up with. It's like this. 
I didn't come up with it. <laughs> but that lick, right? We've heard it over and over using the G minor pentatonic scale. In the first position, I'm doing a bend on the third string, fifth fret. Okay, that's the first note. Then here with my uh, index on the third fret of the second string, play that. First string, third fret. And then we're gonna bend the second string, sixth fret, a full step above. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four. Four notes. If I play that over this and match everything. Works, right? Now the four, I'm gonna give it to you later. I'm still gonna have the, the one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And the four can come anytime. There's a balance for you to for you to try a little bit. There's a zone where it's gonna work. If it's too late, it's like, ah, it doesn't sound good. If it's too early, uh, not sound good, but wait a little bit. Just, here's the candy, there you go. Right? It doesn't even have to fall on one of the subdivisions. There it is. So play with that a little bit. Now let's try to start the first note, the one, one, on the one, on a strong beat. One, one, one. But the rest, the three other notes, I'm gonna space them out. And you're gonna space them out more and more as we go. That gives the impression, oof, sorry. That gives the impression of, uh, of uh, kind of floating around time, right? When you have something like that. Now, yes, it takes confidence. You don't want to deliver that right away. But at some point, you can allow yourself to be free and freer of that established backing track. So we're gonna play a little bit with that. I'm gonna start kind of in. On the beat, and every once in a while, I'm gonna introduce some of these outside of time floaty notes. And more and more, as we go further and further away from the track, you'll see that floaty effect. Let me try that. So again, I'm gonna start in. floating around. Really free of time there. All right, it's getting a little too weird, so I'm gonna go back inside. A little bit to show that yes, I do, and I am aware of the time, but then There's one I think that helps. It's the ugly face <laughs> as he's going up. I'm not. I'm not kidding. It really helps because uh, the guitar being an extension of your body, if you really get into it and and you, your your face expression shows it. And I'm not talking about like show gimmicks. I'm talking about in the comfort of your own room. If you start to feel it in your face and, and you go with it, that's gonna influence your play, your, your playing. It's gonna influence your play, your, the way you attack notes. And that um, heartfelt way of approaching notes when you're, when you're doing that um, effect, it, it goes very well with it. You don't wanna have a proper, um, every note equal in volume type of way of playing as you're doing this. You really want to emphasize on, on the, the tone of the notes, the velocity, the, the level of volume and all that.
and so forth. All right, getting carried away, but I, I truly hope that this is uh, inspiring to you, that you take this to heart and, and try it in the comfort of your own room or wherever you practice. It's not a kind of thing that, uh, ooh, I've got a gig tonight, I'm gonna try that thing. No, develop that and develop that sense of taking control over your playing and being confident in who you are and being above that time every once in a while for that floaty time flex effect. Thank you again for watching this video. If this is your first visit, consider subscribing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A new video just like this one comes out helping guitar players around the world develop their musicality on the instrument. Remember, you can get the assets below completely free. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Practice well.